So it looks like the DA has decided to take the opposition benches in Gauteng. This comes after the DA and the ANC failed to reach an agreement. So right now we have a situation where two political parties are actually accusing each other of not negotiating in good faith. We have the ANC that is accusing the DA and saying that, man, these people are negotiating with us in bad faith. You have the DA that is saying that, man, these people have pulled a rug under our feet and these people cannot be trusted. So right now when I'm sitting here and thinking about the drama between these two political parties, I'm starting to think that maybe, just maybe, these negotiations were supposed to be televised. Maybe these negotiations were supposed to be televised. Maybe these negotiations were supposed to be conducted the same way they conduct parliament. You have the members of the DA on one side. You have the members of the ANC on one side. Put the microphones and put the cameras and allow the people to actually watch what's happening. Because right now, you have two political parties that are going behind the scenes and they are negotiating whatever that they are negotiating. And when they don't reach an agreement, they come out in media and they start accusing each other of not negotiating in good faith. So what, is, what, what this whole thing is doing is that it's dividing the people, it's dividing the country. It's dividing the people, it's dividing the country. And now you have a political party that actually helped Ramaphosa to become the president of the country, sitting in opposition benches in Gauteng. So as South Africans, we really have to sit back and actually ask ourselves, how is this thing going to affect everything nationally? Because the DA is not going to take this lying down. They're not going to take it lying down. So how is it going to affect everything nationally? It's not going to be business as usual. It's not going to be business as usual. Because when you listen to the DA and when you listen to the ANC, you can actually feel that, okay, these people had some sort of agreement. They had some sort of agreement, but for some reason, they are not finding the common ground. So what actually stops these people from finding a common ground? What stops these two political parties from actually going ahead with whatever that they agreed upon? Because when you come to the media and accuse each other of negotiating in bad faith, the people are just standing there as spectators. Now we are taking side, okay, maybe this one is wrong, or maybe that one is wrong. That's why I'm saying maybe these negotiations were supposed to be televised. So that South Africans can make up their own mind. So that South Africans can say that, DA, you are wrong for this one. ANC, you are dead wrong for this one. Maybe this is how this whole thing was supposed to be conducted. Because this whole thing that is happening right now, it is going to have some sort of effect nationally, whether we like it or not. It is going to have some sort of effect nationally. So the question is, how is it going to affect everything nationally? All right, joining us to articulate their position post the ANC's briefing is the DA's Federal Council Chair, Helen Zilla. Ms. Zilla, good afternoon, or rather good evening. Thank you very much for your time. So all the talks we reported on that were taking place behind closed doors have now come to naught. You'll be taking up seats in opposition. Talk to us about this. Well, we were prepared to negotiate in good faith. We always are. And it was quite clear that the ANC did not want to negotiate a power sharing agreement. They wanted to continue in full control and offer us a few positions to prop them up in government. And that isn't the will of the voters. We were only slightly smaller than the ANC in Gauteng. And we needed, in terms of the statement of intent that we signed at national level, we were entitled to take an equal share in the running of Gauteng and to ensure that we had a power sharing agreement 
that reflected the national statement of intent. Mm -hmm. You were quite emphatic yesterday that you don't want to be co-opted, as you say, that you wanted meaningful power sharing that reflected the proportionality clause, but also the will of the people. But some have argued that even when it comes to the national government of unity, even there, when you had stressed the need to reflect that proportionality clause, it wasn't to be because the ANC did nevertheless get the lion's share of the cabinet posts. Well, at national level, the president can decide how big he wants to make the cabinet. And we expected him to have a smaller cabinet because that is what he'd committed to the voters that he would do. And we were expecting a cabinet of about 27 people. We got slightly more than half the ANC's total in the national election. So they got slightly less than double our total. And that is what we expected to argue for in terms of national representation. In the end, we settled for slightly less than that without knowing that the ANC was going to announce such a hugely inflated cabinet and such a very large number of deputy ministers. And of course, the president has a right to expand the cabinet to whatever size he wishes, even though it's highly undesirable in a country like South Africa. But in Gauteng, that's entirely different. There is a specific number of people by law in the provincial cabinet. That is a premier and 10 MECs. So we knew what the number was there. And we also know what our rightful proportion would be in terms of the election result. The ANC would get six out of the 11, and we would get five out of the 11. But the ANC wanted to take eight out of the 11 and give us three. And that is not even vaguely in line with the outcome of the election. Mm -hmm. It is not a matter of bean counting. It is a matter of principle. We, just, we signed a statement of intent that we expect to stick to. And there are various clauses which the ANC clearly does not intend to respect. And our job is not to prop the ANC up in government, but to reflect the will of the voters of Gauteng. Mm. No. But me, like, I would say that the first mistake was to actually believe that Ramaphosa was going to have a small cabinet. There is no way that Ramaphosa was going to have a small cabinet. Ramaphosa knew that he already had problems within the Afghan National Congress. And him agreeing to work with the DA it means that they're going to have to share the cabinet with the DA. So I would say that it was quite expected that Sagala Ramaphosa would make up some portfolios so that the cadres can stay in government. I, I would say that, I would actually argue that it was kind of expected for Ramaphosa to make up some portfolios or to chop up some portfolios so that the, the, the cadres can stay in parliament, the, the cadres can stay in government. So I wouldn't actually bank on what Ramaphosa has told the people of this country. Ramaphosa has told us a lot of things. Ramaphosa has lied to the people of this country time and time again. So for the DA and Helen Zilla speci specifically to think that just because Ramaphosa has promised a smaller cabinet to the people of this country, that, that is exactly what he was going to do. There, there's no way that Ramaphosa was going to do that. There's no way that Ramaphosa was going to do that. Ramaphosa was was there and, 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 and he was going to appease the ANC and at the same time appease the members of the government of national unity. This is how he approached everything that I have to appease the ANC, I have to appease these people in the government of national unity. So I would argue that it was kind of expected that Ramaphosa would do something like this. On your media statement released just a short while ago, you state that you are unable to accept a counter offer. Is this the offer you spoke about yesterday at your media briefing or there was another offer post that briefing because we understood that yesterday talks were still ongoing? Well, of course, I did not issue that statement. That was issued by the DA in Gauteng. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear Fikile and Balula's press conference. Now, we don't accept offers made in front of a microphone at a press conference. We sit over the table, we speak to people, and we reach a proper agreement. So that's not the way to make offers. 
when you're addressing a press conference to position yourself in a specific way. And we don't expect to be treated like that. Mm -hmm. When exactly did you take the decision that you were now pulling out? Because yesterday at your press briefing, you were still open to have those negotiations. We didn't pull out. The ANC went along unilaterally. That is the whole point. All right. We said yesterday the offer they made to us was unacceptable. It was contrary to the statement of intent that we signed on the 14th of June. It was contrary to the will of the voters in Gauteng and it would hold the DA hostage in a massive majority ANC government, which they had not earned via the ballot box. Mm -hmm. And we could not accept that. That we had not walked out, that we were awaiting a much fairer offer. All right. So just to get clarity, pardon me for interjecting there. Is this now a similar scenario to that which Solim Simanga spoke of, that when we heard that the premier was going to announce a cabinet, you were like the rest of South Africa, people that found out when it was about to be announced. Are you saying that this is what has happened yet again, that when they announced now, you were not aware that you are now being left out? Well, the ANC does things unilaterally the whole time. And that is the problem. They haven't come to terms with the fact that they lost an election and that not everything is done on their terms and they don't boss everybody around as if they got a clear majority. They did not. Mm -hmm. We have partners and we are almost equal partners in Gauteng and we have the right to be treated as such. Mm -hmm. Now, Ms. Zilla, you assured the nation yesterday that the inability to find each other with the Gauteng ANC would not impact the government of provincial unity in KZN or the national government. Is this still the position of the DA? Yes, it is the position of the DA. We don't do brinkmanship in other provinces or at national government to force a settlement elsewhere. We deal with cases on their merits. And in Gauteng, we have a mandate from the voters and a very large mandate from the voters and we have a responsibility to stand up for them and to ensure that they're represented in government in a fair way and we will do that we will be true to our voters mm -hmm. another commitment that came from your provincial leader solim simanga yesterday was that you will not resort to pettiness or seek to perhaps sponsor a vote of no confidence in the premier now that he has been elected is this still the commitment of the democratic alliance well, we can't make a commitment for a whole term, obviously not. Mm -hmm, but um, that there will be no pettiness? We're not petty. We're mm. never petty. What do you mean pettiness? What do you mean pettiness? These people have... Helen Zill is sitting there like, what do you mean pettiness, man? What do, you need? what do you mean pettiness? These people have literally kicked us out of the provincial government. So you cannot sit there and expect us not to do anything about it. And I know that right now Helen Zill says that what happened in Gauteng, it is not going to affect the business in KZN and it is also not going to affect the business nationally, man. I, I guess I guess we will see. <laughs> I guess we will see. <laughs> I guess we will see. But you hear what Helen Zill is saying that right now. That <laughs> this is not pettiness, but we cannot make a commitment. A whole the term is too long. The term is too long. <laughs> Democratic Alliance. Well, we can't make a commitment for a whole term, obviously not. Mm -hmm, but um, that there will be no pettiness? We're not petty. We're mm. never petty. I mean, the point is we are principled. And when we stand by the terms of an agreement that we signed, we do that in a calm and rational way. The ANC calls us arrogant. We say we stick by agreements that are signed by both sides, and it's not arrogant to expect other people to do the same thing. And that's where we are now. We aren't petty, but we negotiate in good faith and we expect other people to negotiate in good faith with us. All right. Ms. Zilla, thank you very much for your time this evening. That's Federal Council Chair Helen Zilla speaking to us. So it looks like Banyazal Sufi, the Premier of Gauteng, will continue with his plans of actually announcing his cabinet so Panyazali Sufi actually had a counter for for Helen Zille or for the Democratic Alliance and according to Panyazali Sufi this is what happened the DA said we are going to vote for the ANC on condition you agree to this document and I want you to read this document because 
it is this document that led to where we are today. And the document says, the composition of the Houding Executive Council, the Premier will come from the ANC, and the allocation of MECs is as follows. Seven MECs will be allocated to the ANC and other parties. I guess this is where the problem actually starts. Seven MECs will be allocated to the ANC and other parties. Not seven MECs will actually belong to the ANC. So according to the DA, the ANC was planning to keep all seven MECs. And this statement is clear as day that seven MECs will belong to the ANC and other political parties. So this is what the ANC and the DA are fighting about. This is what they are fighting about, that you said that seven MECs will belong Pigeon to the ANC MEC. and other political parties. But now, you are telling us that you're going to keep all seven MECs. So the DA said, we are not going to allow you to do that, or we are not going to allow our political party to sit in that kind of situation where you people will keep seven MECs as if you won the elections. We are fine with three MECs, <laughs> but we do not expect you to, to keep the whole seven. So I think this is where actually the fight was. Because the, the DA was saying, okay, via Sudima Shati, they were saying, okay, three our side, but you cannot keep all seven. Maybe if you invite other political parties, maybe one or two, Maybe you can get something like, what, five, and, and other political parties will get like one, one, or something like that. So they actually expected the ANC not to try to keep all seven MECs. So I think this is where the fight actually started. This document, the DA said, we are going to vote for the ANC on condition you agree to this document. And I want to read this document because it is this document that led to where we are today. And the document says, the composition of the Houding Executive Council, the Premier will come from the ANC, and the allocation of MECs is as follows. Seven MECs will be allocated to the ANC and other parties, and three MECs will be allocated to the DA. The composition of the legislature the speaker will come from the ANC, the deputy speaker will come from the DA, the chair of chairs will come from the DA, the deputy chair of chairs will come from the ANC. That the principle of allocation of chairperson is based on an oversight model where when a party occupies an MEC position, the same party shall also shall not occupy the chair of the portfolio. This is the document the DA gave us, saying they are requesting for three portfolio bonds. And that's what our SG say. We have offered that. The snack is that we said we have started on this document. Let's continue. Because this is the document that led to the election of the Premier Speaker and Deputy Speaker. Let's go and elect the remaining bonds. Then the DA came, said, came a day later and said that we draw in this document that we drew in this document, and they want us to start afresh. So when they withdrew the document, we were already at advanced stage of consulting with other political parties. And when they came back later, maybe I've heard the story that we gave them one, we gave them two, we gave them, when they came back later, we indicated that your withdrawal meant that we need to engage other political parties. We engaged all other political parties. We really believe we can reconfigure this to be the way it is. And that's where the dispute came. Well, of course. So this is exactly what people are fighting about. But the DA said, man, we, we didn't want you to keep all seven MECs. Because that's, that, that was not the deal from the start. The deal was us, we keep three MECs. You keep seven with other political parties, not alone. Not alone. So, guys, this whole thing, man, this is the reason why I'm saying that maybe these whole things were supposed to be negotiated. Just all eyes.
Maybe these whole things were supposed to be negotiated live on national television. Man. Maybe we, we, we were supposed to be given that privilege as the people of this country to actually watch these people negotiate so that we can make up our own minds. We are supposed to do that. We are supposed to do that. So I guess we will see where everything goes. Because right now, these people are going against each other. They are going against each other. Guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.